guys welcome back to my channel it's autumn now and autumn brings a lot of things it brings leaves on the trees it brings hot chocolate you're allowed to wear a lot more clothing which i'm very happy about the hats and the scarves and the warmth in general um, it also brings colds which is what i have currently so if i sound like a bit weird then uh, that's why. And if I make it through this video without having a coughing fit, then it also brings good tidings of Christmas and all of that jazz. But what a lot of people brush over is the time in between Halloween, which is actually my favorite, favorite time of year. I absolutely love it. I love horror and horror. <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate the spooky times, um, I thought I would tell you a little bit about my paranormal experiences. If you believe in this sort of stuff, then great. If you don't believe in this stuff and think it's a load of rubbish, then that's alright. Yeah, so grab yourself a cup of tea. I already have. Oh, lovely mug. <laughs> Sit back, relax and uh, listen to my tales. That I lived in four houses and three of them were haunted. Here's I'm gonna tell you a couple every week leading up to Halloween. <laughs> let's go, let's go with the first one. Hang on, sip a tea first. There's just a few random things that have happened to me while I've been out and about. My family in general tend to be the type that if there is something around, then we're going to find it. We should have really opened up as paranormal investigators, to be honest. And the first one was I was travelling back from college one day and I was on the bus. And when I'm on the bus on public transport, I usually go out of my way to try and avoid people sitting by me. I will move if someone needs a seat, but you know, if the bus is completely empty, you'll always get that one person that wants to sit next to you. I remember very clearly I had a book in front of me, Sudoku. I didn't really look up as such, but you know when you kind of like glance to the side? This old man walked past, I saw his hand go up the sides of the seats grabbing the poles as he went and I heard him sit down behind me and you know like when you can feel people sat down behind you anyway I saw this I saw this old man physically walk past me and sit on the seat behind me so I was just sat there with my Sudoku book I remember thinking to myself my god that man's breathing is really heavy because all you could hear behind was like someone had been running a marathon and then stopped. So that's what, that's the only thing that really sort of made me take any notice. So anyway, I'd carried on with the Sudoku and I'd heard this breathing the whole way back. I got off at the very last stop. The bus driver said back to me, right, everyone off, got my stuff, got up, and I could still hear the breathing at this point. I could still hear it and still feel someone behind me. I turned to let him pass first and I realised that I was the only person on the bus. So that was uh, that was my public transport paranormal activity. We used to do an end of year show and it used to be at the Playhouse in Western Supermare. Me and another two students did a sketch it was quite a well-known sketch and it's uh, it, I was a news presenter talking to a scientist about his discovery of trying to make a gorilla talk. Yeah. Mum had taken a photo while we were on stage. She turned around and said to me, oh like that sketch I really enjoyed that, that was really funny. But who was the other girl and why didn't she say anything? And I kind of looked at her like, Time to put you in a home! <laughs> she took out her phone and showed me 
this picture that she'd taken. And if I can insert it, then I will. In the photo, there's three of us positioned on stage. It looks like there's a fourth person. But the only thing is, is that there were actually stairs going down to the main area where this person was supposedly sat. There were no lighting effects being used, it was literally just lights on and us on stage. There was no fancy schmancy lights darting here, there and everywhere. It actually looks like she's in a completely different position to what I am. I have my hand up like this with a microphone, she has her hands on her laps. Well, I'm assuming it's a girl. That was really weird. So, that was my other experience outside of the home. My first house, uh, it, I don't know if there was anything necessarily like bad, but it, some of these places you do, you get a feeling when you walk in there. It was always like someone else was in the room or someone was sat in the room and you were gonna go and disturb them. That's what it felt like. When I was younger, I used to cover my ears with the pillow because I was convinced that people used to come into my room, sit on my bed and try and talk to me. To this day, I still do that. Yeah, that was a bit weird. Next year, that's what it used to be like. And they used to whisper, so I used to cover my ears over. So that was creepy. Nothing else ever happened. The second thing that always used to happen in the house was that someone would walk up the drive past the kitchen window to the front door and then stop. The amount of times that we opened the door expecting it to be a postman with a package or we were expecting someone to turn out and it wasn't. There was just no one there but you could clearly see a shadow or an outline of someone walking past the door. The other thing that used to happen is is that whatever room we were sat in, if we were sat in the living room, we'd be sat down like watching TV and my mum would go Oh, I could really do with a cup of tea. The kettle would switch on. That was a bit weird as well. But at least it was helpful. So I had an imaginary friend, well I say imaginary, she might not have been, called Mary. I, I don't know if I named her Mary or not, but she used to wave at me out of the bedroom window when I was outside in the garden. Or sometimes I would be in the bedroom and see her in the garden. She used to wear like a really just a big long nighty down to the floor. And I remember thinking, oh, this looks like my granny's nighties. My friend came back and stayed. We had a sleepover at my house. So at this point we were probably like maybe 11 or 12. I remember her running over to me, shaking me to get up to say, um, I've just seen someone in a long nighty walk in the hallway and back down the stairs. I'd never told her about that before she stayed round as well, which was a little bit creepy, so maybe Mary wasn't so imaginary after all. So anyway, how I'm gonna pile these all together, I don't know. That's just a few things that happened while I've been out and about and in my first house that I lived in. Do you have any ghost stories? I would love to hear them. Write them down in the comment below, message them to me. And also, tell me what you're going as for Halloween. Are you going out trick-or-treating? I know I am. As always, thank you very much for watching. Well done if you've made it to the end of this video. Thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lot of spooky stories, if they are spooky at all. Some people might be sat there going, rubbish I know some really scary stuff if you do tell me please I like it have a lovely day or evening or afternoon whichever time of day you're watching this and I'll see you soon bye Thanks for watching! <laughs>